Hi, I'm Fernando Pereira from UFMG, and today we continue our introduction on Static Program Analysis course. I would like to take this time to show you a few things that are very exciting about programming languages, but this is a very quick overview and, of course, it comes from my personal bias. There are way more things happening, we all know, so bear with me for now. I chose here four programming languages that I find very interesting to start with. They are interesting be it due to the new ideas that they bring on, be it due to the elegance with which they implement old ideas. I would like to start with Rust. Rust uses this notion of ownership types. In other words, it's possible for a pointer to own a memory region. And if two pointers try to own the same region, an error would ensue. That really helps to get rid of data races in a program. And that's an academic idea. This notion of ownership types was invented in the, at the end of the 90s and published at Uppsala, which is a programming languages conference. Another programming language that's super academic is Scala. Scala has this notion of object calculus that's really particular. If you want to know more about it, stop the video and try to reason on why this program will not compile. The error happens in the last line. And then we have Idris. That brings back this notion of dependent types into mainstream programming. Dependent types do not really appear with Idris, but Idris really makes a very elegant implementation of them. We will see a bit of dependent types along the course as a key element in the construction of mechanical theorem provers. And finally, I chose to show a bit of Elixir. That's a programming language that has much to do with an older language called Erlang. They both execute in a virtual machine called Beam, and they implement a concurrency model called Actors. That means that programs can receive messages like I'm showing here in red. And they can take actions based on these messages, and these agents can run in parallel, and we can have thousands of them. So we are talking about a virtual machine that's able to spawn thousands of virtual threads. And in addition to these new programming languages, we have new architectures appearing all the time. For instance, since 2016, we can program actual quantum computers. They are accessible through, through the cloud, for instance. And with these new quantum architectures, new compiler-related problems become important. For instance, one such problem is called qubit allocation. That's the problem of mapping quantum circuits, I mean the programs, onto the quantum machines. This problem resembles in some ways register allocation, but has many differences and becomes each day a bit more important. And with we have all these tensor compilers coming along as well. We are going through a time in which sparse data structures are becoming ubiquitous, and we need it to compile them efficiently. So if we consider all these environments used in the development of machine learning applications like Keras, TensorFlow, PyTorch, Cafe, and so on and so forth, we must remember that they all use compilers and have been developed with the help of compiler engineers, of course. Another direction that's really becoming interesting is on web development, because we have this new program representation, WebAssembly, that's gaining support from every browser. Many programming languages now target WebAssembly, but there are many other languages that still need backends for this environment. And uh, with this example of WebAssembly, I close this presentation. It was very short, of course, and as I mentioned before, there are many more things happening in the field of programming languages. That was just a very quick overview. In the next class, we start looking into actual course content. We shall see a bit about local optimizations and some simple program representations. Till there, feel free to write me with questions and comments.